Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how social media information systems can actually benefit an organizational strategy. So in chapter two, we talked about how organizational strategy helps determine the value chains of a company, which then helps determine the processes that actually generate the value. And those processes determine what information systems we actually need to implement in order to help us make value from our organization. Uh, we also talked previously about how social media is a dynamic process from pretty much all different angles, whether you're using social media or running social media, everything is very complicated. There's no step-by-step -step way for us to work with social media because people who use social media can be very unpredictable and it requires a lot of thought and a lot of flexibility in order to work with uh, social media. So because social media is dynamic, figuring out this whole process of how social media information systems can uh, add value to a company, this whole relationship that I outline here, the relationship between strategy and value chains and processes and information systems, this whole thing is very difficult to figure out. I also briefly want to review the uh, primary activities of a value chain, which we talked about in chapter two under Porter's model of a value chain. Uh, the primary activity are going to be inbound logistics, uh, which is about taking whatever inputs uh, that you're going to use, uh, receiving them, storing them, and disseminating them throughout the organization, wherever those need to go. You have operations and manufacturing, which transforms inputs into the final product. Outbound logistics uh, is all about the collecting that final product, uh, storing it, and then physically distributing it to buyers whenever it's time. Uh, sales and marketing induces buyers to purchase the product. And customer service uh, helps customers who have already bought the product uh, make sure that they get the support that they need if the product isn't working great and keeps them happy so that they don't uh, sort of do a negative review or you know not recommend them to other us to other people etc cetera, etc cetera. now what we have here is a, a table of how social media can benefit uh, the different value chain activities that we just previously talked about i'll start with uh, sales and marketing uh, when you're using social media to do sales and marketing work you're going to be focusing outwards uh, towards prospective customers. So you are going to put your focus out of your organization towards people who might be, um, who might be, become interested in buying your product. Uh, the dynamic processes involved are social customer uh, relationship management and uh, the peer-to-peer -peer sales kind of thing where um, you actually get people to help recommend your product to their peers, whether or not they're doing that on purpose or not. They might not be paid by you and they might not be actively trying to benefit you. They might think that they're trying to benefit their friends by selling your product, but um, trying to in tr sort of trying to induce that kind of thing by posting about deals or products or something like that and then hoping that people share that kind of stuff. Uh, that would count as peer-to-peer -peer sales work. And of course, the risks are loss of credibility and bad PR. If someone makes a post that doesn't go over well at all, that could heavily affect a business's credibility. And just, it could be a public relations nightmare, uh, which would lead to a whole thing of trying to, um, you know, write up the corporate apology note and uh, all that kind of stuff. For customer service, this is also focused outwards towards customers. Um, this is the kind of thing where you try to catch people who are complaining about a product or a service or the company as a whole, and then try to reach out to them over social media, either through a public post or through DMs or something like that, direct messages, and offer to provide further support, uh, get more information about the problem, see if you can provide any, uh, you know, deals or something like that as an apology, 
whatever, try to get that, um, try to get that whole process going. Peer-to-peer -peer support would also involve, uh, you know, users supporting other users with the customer service uh, role. So uh, sharing customer service related information, if there's like a large problem that people have and trying to get people to like spread that kind of information, just in case at the uh, business themselves couldn't directly reach people. Um, that kind of stuff would be a dynamic process involved in all of this. And of course the risks are the loss of control of everything because if you, uh, if someone's complaining about a problem, uh, for one, they're kind of posting it publicly. So a lot of people are going to see that and may not see the organization's response offering customer service. But also by responding to that kind of thing as an organization, um, that will expose this possible problem to a lot more people. So it's taking a pretty big risk that those people are going to see what this original poster was complaining about that, you know, they wouldn't have seen it normally, but because an organization responded to it, those people now do see it and might start associating that with the organization. So it can get a little bit tricky, but that whole risk versus reward of reaching out to people to try to help them versus possibly spreading the knowledge that people are having this kind of problem uh, can be a little weird. Now with uh, inbound and outbound logistics, these are both pretty similar. Inbound logistics, uh, social media is going to benefit inbound logistics by you know the ability to reach out to the people who supply the inputs for your processes. And then outbound is going to be if you are shipping out to people in the supply chain, uh, reaching out to people down the stream, down downstream in the supply chain. And this facilitates problem solving on both sides. Um, it's a way for uh, multiple um, organizations to contact each other to collaborate to try to figure out something maybe try to uh, come to a better deal or try to address a shared problem that they all have all that kind of stuff and this might not take place on something like twitter or instagram or whatever this might be more of a let's say zoom kind of value chain activity or a, a zoom kind of problem solving session but they can try to use social media to uh sort of work out those kinds of problems now this comes at the risk of privacy um if, if they're doing this in more of a public space uh like twitter or something like that uh you know maybe they can bring attention to things maybe they are able to Get people on their side or solve problems by working together to bring something to the attention of someone who can solve their problem or whatever right there's a lot of good that doing this in the public can do but this comes at the risk of privacy because you're exposing um uh, business relationships and deal talking about deals and things like that and if that kind of information could benefit someone else then maybe you do need privacy and maybe doing it over a more official kind of uh, channel is more important. Social media is about publicly sharing stuff for the most part. So you have to know that doing this kind of problem solving and doing this kind of coordination with the upstream and downstream uh, supply chain shippers uh, is going to be beneficial. Doing it publicly needs to be beneficial because you do lose privacy by doing so. With manufacturing and operations, the focus is actually going to be twofold, uh, outwards for user design and inwards for operations and manufacturing related things. So for the user design side of things, you can actually uh, involve users in the design process when you're actually designing a product or something like that through the act of crowdsourcing, where you get user input and use that to uh, guide how you're actually designing your product. This might be anything from 
uh, looking at designs that users have already posted on social media, maybe like 3D printing designs or that kind of thing. Or this could be through getting people involved in like a poll or a, a uh, survey or actually just reading through comments and seeing what people are interested in doing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can take all of that feedback and use it to uh, contribute to the actual design of products. And actually that feedback, you know, taking that feedback and sharing it you know, pushing it into operations and manufacturing might be the inwards side of things where you're actually focusing inwards to get that information towards operation and manufacturing. Uh, inwards can also refer to internal social media, things like internal discussion boards or wikis or all that kind of thing where uh, management can actually get feedback from people in operations and manufacturing. Um, oh, another uh, possible example might also be looking at the way users are interacting on social media and trying to use that to forecast uh, how many of a certain product you need to manufacture. That could be a huge uh, way in which social media can, uh, with an in inward focus, inform uh, the operation. And then the industry relationships and operational efficiencies is going to refer more to this um, this idea of working with an internal social media, doing that kind of communication to really streamline things within the operation uh, within the operations of a company as well as uh, you know building relationships not just within the company itself but within everyone, like a, a whole bunch of people in the industry in order to share information that way. Now, of course, you risk losing efficiency and effectiveness um, if you are doing a lot of technical work as a part of product design, for example, and you have a lot of users talk about features that they want, but they don't really have the knowledge of what's actually going to work in a product. Uh, maybe it might make the product worse to include those kinds of features or something like that. That could lose, uh, you could lose effectiveness of the product or efficiency of the product, that kind of stuff. The efficiency and effectiveness could also refer to the um, actual processes themselves, because if you're using user guided design in order to inform the processes of creating the product or you're crowdsourcing that kind of thing, from within or outside of the company, uh, you could lose a lot of efficiency for, from people who don't necessarily know how best to do, you know, work with that process. So that's the manufacturing and operations there. And then we have human resources, which actually is a secondary activity rather than a primary activity in the value chain. But human resources actually can make advantage of um, social media in order to try to recruit people. So employment candidates and employee communications can be benefited by uh, social media. So employment candidates outwards, there can be a lot of recruiting done through social media. If someone posts a really cool project on social media and a HR person comes across this and says, hey, this is the kind of thing we need for our company. Let's try to set up an interview or something. They can try to connect over social media where that uh, really cool project was first posted. Uh, of course, there is also the internal communication uh, through social media or internal, yeah, internal communication through social media. Uh, it allows employees to connect with each other, to build pools of knowledge with each other, to just talk about things, give feedback, all that kind of stuff, which can be really helpful. Um, of course, there are the risks, especially if the um, in the uh, reaching out to employment candidates side of things, they can make errors in terms of like, oh, you know, this person's already hired for a competitor or this person uh, is just sharing something that they didn't make and we lost a lot of time or something like that. They can also lose credibility uh, for making these kinds of mistakes, uh, especially if uh, the person responds, let's say, with a very snappy comeback or something like that, which is very popular on especially Twitter nowadays. I'm 
have heard. Uh, that can that kind of dunk can negatively affect a company. Similar thing for internal, where if a, a lot of employees are complaining about the same thing and also seeing that they're compl- that other employees are complaining about the same things, and they get this understanding that hey, this is something that really affects a lot of people within this company. That can be a huge uh, blow to a company's credibility that they'll have to spend a lot of time fixing. So they can get that kind of feedback from employees and fix things, which is good, but then the employees might see unresolved issues and the company might lose credibility in their eyes. So that's just a brief overview of how social media information systems can actually benefit organizational strategy. The next video we'll be talking about will be regarding social capital.